present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. We are back. We are here. Another week has flown by quickly. As I always say. Oh! It's good to sit down and relax. You're probably wondering who the hell this is if you haven't seen us before. Well, you're going to find out who the hell this is. Welcome, everyone. And welcome to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I am your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. And it is, right now, 4th of July weekend, 2015. Uh, yesterday was 4th of July. I could not do the show uh, on Saturdays like we normally do it because it was. Uh, not only uh, you, the birthday of the United States, but it was also my mother's birthday. So we had a little party for her. Really? And uh, I think she turned 84. I don't know. She was born July 4th, 1932. Rosemary. Oh, so what was that? You're a good mathematician. Is that 84? Something like that? Or was it uh, uh, 1932 minus 2015? I'm only getting 82. 2015 well, minus 1932 would give her age. 2000, uh, 15. 2012 is 80. Whatever. She's in her 80s. Yeah. Let's just round it off to... Early 80s. Early 80s, there you go. Which is a lot better than late 80s. Late 80s. Yes, um, you're looking at one of the smart people who uh, refuses to get um, stuck in bumper to bumper traffic on the local highways here in New Jersey. Uh, refuses to uh, breathe in other people's carbon monoxide yeah. and, and deal mm -hmm. with the aggravation and the stress of um, um, taking hours to get to your beach destination. How about just, how about flying places? Not just the, in, in town. And going you mean to the, the airports are busy ah, too? Oh my God. Wow, I, you, could you imagine with, with the um, security check? They're fondling you your... You mean with the junk check? Find the fondling your giblets? Yeah. Your, yeah. your junk? Yeah. That takes a moment or two. Yeah, jiggle them around a little bit. Okay. Make sure there's no, there's no there's um, no explosives in your in your in your scrotum. <laughs> your urethra. <laughs> urethra, urethra Franklin, yeah. But any hey, urethra Franklin. Da 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 da. da. The levity belt. Um. Yeah, and then when you get to the Jersey Shore, same bullshit every year. They make you pay. Uh, for parking, they make you pay for changing into your bathing suit, they make you pay uh, 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 to get on the beach, a cover charge, uh, every, you got to pay for everything. Then there's uh, the gas, wear and tear on the car. It's not like people who live in other states in the on the East Coast where they just drive minutes, you know, and like my friend in Florida, you know, Ken Thiessen former uh, WWE star and personal trainer extraordinaire, Boca Raton, Florida. Greetings, Ken. You know, he's, he's just like five minutes from the beach. A beautiful, clean beach that's free. Ah. Free. A, an optimal, clean, a beautiful turquoise blue white sand beach for the most part. That's free and minutes away. No, no, old Jersey's got a it's got to run a scam, run a scam, and if you want to get an idea of how New Jersey people in business and politics are, are really all about, just take a look 
at old Krispy Kreme Crisco Balloon Boy himself, the uh, the um, no longer the driver, but the back of the Republican 2016 campaign clown bus, Chris he, Christie. Chris he, Christie. But he's the straight talker. Remember McCain's bus when he was on the Straight Talk Express? Well, now Chris McCain. You yeah. mean with Sarah Palin as his vice presidential yeah, running mate? Yeah, right on the bus in the front window. Straight Talk Express. Oh, she's a straight talker, all right. <laughs> like her daughter's. Uh, I don't know how true it was, but she's. They they made a facsimile uh, blow up sex a love doll. doll. A love doll. They call it love doll of uh, Bristol Palin. Uh, Bristol loves the pistol. Brazen Bristol loves the pistol, has a sex doll now, real entrepreneur. She's starting out young as a businesswoman, and I think she found her calling. She finally found her calling in life. I know her mother found her calling as an idiot and a lush. Well, maybe Bristol is a slut and a lush. Well, who knows? And, you know, and, and, and Bristol got just received an award about her traveling nationwide, uh, making a small fortune, telling young people to be abstinent, to refrain from sex. Now that picture of the love doll was only of the head, with the mouth with the that mouth you could open. stick your dick in. And now, if if Bristol would have allowed the guy to stick his dick in her mouth, she wouldn't have got pregnant the first time. That's true. If she would have maybe not even this. If she would have took the the old scum guppies in her mouth. Yeah. You know, in the words of uh, um, the great, um, not the great Gatsby, the great, oh, right. uh, um, oh man. He's your friend for crying out loud, you forgot his name? I, I, I just went blank. <laughs> uh, Ron Jeremy. Yeah, oh, Ron The great Jeremy. Ron Jeremy. He's not your friend. He coined the word scum guppies. Oh. He's making rum now. Ron D. Jeremy. He's making rum made, made in Central America, probably by child labor. It's in Panama. I think it's made in Panama. Ron D. Jeremy. Ron is a Spanish word for rum. So play on words. But yeah, yeah, the, the rip off Jersey Shore, and where they they don't let you bring food and beverage on uh, the yeah, beach the anymore. Because they complain about uh, people littering and not cleaning up their mess, which is true. But I think the real reason is they want you to go pay five bucks for a hot dog on a boardwalk. Another scam. Well, isn't it funny? Of how, the Jersey Shore. How the governments of states and the federal, they're always taking care of the business guy. To hell with the consumer. You mean like the uh, Hurricane Sandy funds that went to the businesses? What is it going to be? Three three years already in October? And not to the people that lost their homes near the coast? And we still got homes that aren't paid for. I don't even know how, you know, if they paid for any at all. But Christy, three years. Christie made sure they sure went to the, the businesses there. Oh, what they do, yeah. I'm mentioning Christy because I have something to read. So do I. Okay, great. Now, I just want to salute our man. A shout out to our man Bernie Sanders. Hey, hey. Not Bernice Anders, like that 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 lush idiot Sarah Palin calls him, but Bernie Sanders. He got a huge crowd. He almost looked like one of those mega church TV evangelist crowds. Not only one crowd. The crowd says uh, uh, several places. Ten thousand people, one place. Ten thousand people. That's like that's a mega church. Yeah. Well, let me give a shout out also to my very near dear friend from Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. And also to my um, Facebook group administrators, Anthony Laura, Sash uh, Boyle, whom I did a recent talk show with. Thank you, Sash. <coughs> it was a blast, as always. Uh, Yo, come back now, you hear? Yo, come back, here. Yeah. Jolton Joe Stebbins. Jean-Luc O'Don. Okay. Uh, and these are these are my uh, uh, Facebook group. Uh, uh, almost all of them. 
There's one more, but I haven't memorized their name. She's got one of those long names, you know. Oh boy. Anyway, um, welcome to all, and um, I just want to get the formalities over with. We're coming to you live and recorded, of course, from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. And uh, please feel free to join our Facebook groups. Uh, um, they are uh, under, of course, my name, James P. Madonna, and or Mega Life 21. Uh, I would like to introduce to you that uh, disembodied, uh, mysterious, spiritual voice you hear in the background. The one and only, my co-host and mentor, and the uh, very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this holiday weekend, sir? I'm here. I'm tired, man, from that party yesterday. So I, I got buzzed on really good wine. Oh my God. No, I was drinking a very dark, uh, trans resveratrol rich Chianti. and uh, ugly omeric proanthocyanidin rich uh, 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 what my favorite wine because it's such high quality and at such a low price yellowtail from Australia I believe it's South Australia I I I bro I put aye, another aye. shrimp on aye, the bobby mate another shrimp on the bobby and pour me another glass aye, of yellowtail, yellowtail. Mate, remember the commercial Foster's? Foster. That's Australian for beer, yeah, mate. mate. Australian for beer. It came in a big, huge yes, can. Big can. Foster's Lager. Actually, a good beer. But anyway, Yellowtail Sweet Red Rue. But I oh, I usually get Shiraz. Mm -hmm. they, they make a good Shiraz, a ca good Cabernet, Pinot Noir, which is the French grape that they usually uh, make good champagne with. But anyway, that's what I was drinking, yellowtail. And uh, you got to get buzz when you're you're with a whatever she is, 83, 84 year old woman who's very picky, very nitpicky, and very demanding. You have to get buzzed, otherwise you lose your mind. But uh, let me read this one thing and get your comment, and then you can sink. We can sink our teeth into these readings. It's about Chris Christie. Hey, hey! Now, I read this today, actually, before I came here. Usually, I, I have a c compilation of everything I've read during the past week, but I really didn't have any. Oh, Chisler's Hall of Shame. I just remembered. I want to induct, uh, first before I induct them into the Chisels Hall of Shame, you people out there in cyberspace, you, you ever have this experience? You buy a cleaning fluid, a, a glass cleaner, air freshener, a, a stain remover, or air freshener, any, anything that comes with the spray pump. At the beginning, it sprays wonderfully. It works. All of them, eventually, sooner or later, mostly sooner, break where they do not pump at all. Then you have to unscrew it and pour it onto a sponge or a, maybe a paper towel or something or a cloth or transfer it into a bottle, a spray bottle with a pump that works. But they all break. They always break on me. They fail to go yeah, to I, distance. I got three quarters of a, of, a, of, a, of a canister of the lavender. That's like if you Let buy go. if you buy a, a can of shaving gel or shaving cream, and mm -hmm. and it comes out for a couple weeks, and then all of a sudden it's a dud. Nothing comes out. Just the liquid, the foam don't come out. Same idea. So, come on, companies. You know, at least allow us the pleasure of spraying 
the uh, it could be anything it could be hand soap you know at least yeah, let yeah. us use the entire content of the bottle well before, then you won't before, have to buy another one bef well you gotta that's be that's what it's all you about you gotta be a fucking idiot to to use one quarter of your cleaning fluid and then buy another one you open it you unscrew well, it you, and you use yeah, it well what if you think it's all what do you think it's done what do you think it's finished? Most lazy nincompoop Americans will probably buy another bottle. There you go. But I mean, at least let us use the entire content of the bottle before the damn pump breaking on us. It just stops spraying, you know? I don't know. Anyway, I just wanted to get that over with. I don't have any products per se. I, I am impressed. I haven't read the reviews yet. I have not read the reviews, but I am impressed with the all new Nutri Bullet RX, which happens to have 1700 watts of power, very comparable to the to the old um, very expensive Vitamix. And this the power of this can liquefy any fruit or vegetable seeds core skin and stem Ooh. no problem and if you run it long enough it makes hot soup because of the the Heat friction from the motor the friction no 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 the motor doesn't boil it the friction from the blades moving at such a high rpm you know the the sharp up the soup. surgical rise it's by friction alone Ooh. so you could literally put all your ingredients in there for soup. I mean, you're going to get cream soup. Don't expect to make beef stew in there. <laughs> it's, got, it's got a pate into it. It's going to liquefy it. But, you know, it, it, I'm sure, you know, people tend to like cream soups anyway. Uh, it, kinda, it just gets every, me. It just gets everything cell ready. You know, when you, the more you pulverize a food, the, the easier more, it is to absorb. The easier it is to digest and absorb and another great thing about these appliances now is you could grind your own flour you know like let's say you want to make fresh uh, a whole wheat flour or oatmeal flour it grinds it into a fine powder anyway I digress Chris Christie Exxon Exxon Mobil was fine um, 8.9 billion dollars for destroying and polluting the environment. I'm assuming, I'm not sure because it didn't say. That was I'm assuming key. I'm assuming it's uh, a federal fine. No, this was this was about Exxon. Okay. The Exxon one as far as I know was something like only a, a, a few million. Okay. Now, Chris Christie secretly negotiates a pardon and reduces the fine for no reason to two hundred and fifty million dollars. Yeah, there you go. How much do you think Chris Christie got under the table from Exxon for the favor? Now, well, was this what kind of fine was this, and how does a governor of New Jersey make that decision to reduce the fine? Was it a federal fine? Wow, I don't know. It does. It didn't say. I don't know. BP got fined too. Yeah, but several billion. But that's a, that's like a, a slap on the wrist, right? Of course, it's always a slap on the wrist with these things. It's always a slap on the wrist, and when it comes to big business, the fat cats, the top twenty percent, there is no trickle down economics. Only siphon up to the the top fat cats on top siphon up economics in our fascist corporate oligarch mm. there is no trickle down it's a lie and everything we talk about today is part of our new series capitalism in a conch shell there's the conch capitalism in a conch shell all right so the conch has has made its uh, appearance and the siphon now let us sink our teeth into these readings. Let me see how long-winded we were. Not that bad. We weren't that long-winded. That's because usually we have more 
inductees and it's into the Chisler's Hall of Shame and, and uh, we ramble on a uh, rant about more stuff. Uh, of course, I, fe I heard that uh, the uh, Republicans are trying to hit below the belt with Bernie Sanders, but it, instead of instead of uh, trying to uh, defend um, your your political philosophy, which happens to be the most fair system known to man, which is what Bernie Sanders represents, what he should be doing is um, he's never he's never going to convince them ever. That that this uncorrupted, very honest form of socialism is the most fair system. He's not going to convince any of them. But what he could do is, as they try to hit him below the belt, Bernie Sanders can expose them and mention everything about the Republicans, including. Don't you think they've been exposed enough including, already? Including. No, 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 no. people. Real don't. publicly, like like when MSNBC interviews him, went publicly. I'm not talking about the internet. There. And mention the Koch brothers. I, you don't want to be militant their at all. supporters don't. Ah, care. come on, man. Here we go again. They don't care. Mention the Koch brothers when you uh, uh, when they attack Bernie Sanders. It's common knowledge. No, it's not common they knowledge. They don't care. You think these bubbleheads out here know about the Koch brothers? Yes. No, they don't. Why wouldn't they? They're idiots. You ever you ever They're all over the place. You ever chat with your average folk? Yeah. They don't know about the uh, Republicans being on the take. You know what they say? They, they say they're the same as the Democrats. That's what they well, say. Well, if you're a corporatist and you saw and you went and you signed the 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 fast uh, the fast track, yeah, you're a sellout corporatist, demon, demon crash, sure. Well, but, but I mean, but but there are still people out there that are blaming everything on the black man in the White House, and they're still saying we need a Republican in the office. And Donald Trump still says that the Obama doesn't have a birth certificate. How are you going to convince these persons? But he's he's entertainment. Donald no, Trump. No, no, no. You can't excuse that. For what he says, he's responsible for it. We are responsible for what we say. Well, that's not the only insane thing Donald Trump has said. No, of course not. And it won't be the last. I mean, you know, you know. But but as far as but who has gotten all the FaceTime uh, for the last week? Right. And has come up to number two. Number two as the choice for the Republicans, Mr. Donald Trump. You know why? Because people love, Americans love to be entertained and, and they like, they like to, they get caught up in the emotion. They, they enjoy uh, Donald Trump's speeches because he's, he's, he's uh, comical and he's funny and he, and he, and he, and he makes that puckery face like a goldfish. And he's got stupid hair, you know. And he's just—that's how we view him. He, but obviously, it's not how they view him. He's, he's coming and off. And if they're listening to his words, he, he's coming. He's coming off as a as a nicer, a kinder Republican. He's coming off uh, like he's a moderate almost. Republicans seem to go for caricatures rather than real person. Yeah, well, look at Because them they're used to being lied to. Okay? Well, if they if they know, if the average Joe Sixpack knows so much about a uh, two-party system being on the take, they sure, uh, 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 they sure vote for the worst person they can possibly vote for, don't they? Yes, they do, but they don't use that excuse that the Democrats are the same for that reason. They use it as an excuse for them. For them, the, the Republicans doing what they do. Well, the Democrats do it too. But That's an excuse plus for they, them to continue. Plus it's easy for people down south and out west to scapegoat the black That's man. That's correct what the, it is. The black man in the White House. Because these Republicans are feeding upon the racism that's already there. In down south and out west, they, they, it's yeah. like 
you but drink. we're not talking about the man, the black man at the White House now. We're talking about a fat guy, and we're talking about a caricature called Donald Trump. Well, okay? the, uh, many of them These are, are different things. Many of them are caricatures. Uh, All Republicans are caricatures. Ted, That's my point. Ted Cruz, Mike Huckabee, uh, Rick Santorum, crazy man, wacko. But Rick Santorum was on Face the Nation today. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. What, what did John Hagee say? He wants to prosecute women that use the word God during sex. Oh God! Oh God! Oh. Woo! It's coming, baby. It's coming. Another orgasm. Bust the nut. Bust the nut. Oh God! Oh. Yeah, he wants to prosecute the women. This fact. is a, these these guys come up with yet. I ain't seen one set himself on fire yet. Not one. Well, Not did, one. did Rush Limbaugh move to Costa Rica? No, he didn't. After Obamacare? No, he didn't. Even though there's little children there for him to uh, <laughs> visit and, with, shall we say? And plenty of oxy, uh, what's it, oxycatonin? Contin. Oxycontin. Yeah. At, at, at just a couple, maybe a couple pesos, a bag. Who the hell knows how much? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I mean, uh, getting back to um, Bernie Sanders, exposing them not not the way the the uh, the media exposes them or, or or Schultz or Rachel Maddow I mean really expose hey if somebody's hitting me below the belt you damn right I'm gonna lower the boom yeah and but mention the media, everything. all the media when they're dealing with politics they're dealing with he said he said they like con they like the the fighting and the controversy and the yeah, but not in the sense of the uh, fairness doctrine. Listen. They like it in they'll give you time for your garbage and they'll give him time for his garbage. That's it. Mud they like the mudslinging. Yeah, but well, it usually doesn't amount to mudslinging. But if the mudslinging they usually soften it. Yeah, but if the mudslinging is based on facts, how could it be bad to mudsling? You have too much. You have too much uh, faith in facts, my friend. Are you trying facts to, do not carry you sound, the day. You sound like you, you want to sell out to the big mammoths on top. Did facts prevent the Catholic Church from having Galileo in house arrest and on a more? Well, that was like his a, garbage oh, uh, 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 idea of that. The actual Earth revolved oh, these around are, the sun. The, you're talking about. Very petty, very selfish people with a lot of I'm power. talking about people in he power. He always interrupts me. Right. People, I, that's what I was going to say before you interrupted well, me. People in power that have small minds, but they happen to have lots of money and the military behind them, uh, deciding, oh, you, you got to love me, you got to like me, you got to give parades for me. You gotta do this. You gotta kiss my ass. You gotta. If I say the light is green and it's really red, you gotta say the light is green. This is almost like a, like a spoiled, selfish child who never really grew up. Like a, 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 a like a, like some guy with a small dick. What the hell do you call all of these goddamn terrorist organizations who want to get their ideas out there? And if you disobey me, I will chop off your head. It's the same thing. Like fascist, it's fascism. It ain't fascism. What is? Let's it? be accurate. Fascism is corporations ruling the government. Okay. Period. Now you're talking about that's totalitarianism. Okay. Totalitarianism would be a dictatorship. That's correct. Any form or a monarchy is any a form. Any form, which includes a monarchy, a king, a king, a king without a parliament. The um, well, you know what? Despite your uh, anxiously awaiting the second coming of Christ and your negativity, Bernie Sanders is is attracting a lot of people. And what so, the hell does that have to do with? No, Jesus because Christ? every time I open my goddamn mouth, you got to contradict me. I didn't mention Jesus Christ at all. No, it's like what does that it's have to like do with but you, you're poo pooing. The, the idea that he's on a steamroll. He's on a steamroll. Bernie Sanders is 
It's, it's got momentum building up so he could very easily expose. You know what expose means? All right. If you call, if a Republican calls Hillary Clinton this, that, and the other thing, and Hillary Clinton's got dirt on, on her Republican opponents, and she lowers the boom and mentions everything they do, that's pretty uh, hard hitting, don't you think? I believe she exposed the vast right wing conspiracy. No, she didn't. Back in the nineties. Not in details. Not in, back in the nineties. How and many you see where it has gone? How many people know the Koch brothers pretty much owns the Republican Party? How many Joe Sixpacks out there know this? Not not many. But this is old news. But the average person that goes to the poll doesn't know all this. You don't know that. You don't know what they know. Maybe I should interview some people. Exactly. Fucking because bastard. I'm sure. You know what? Continue. I'm, I'm done. Sure I'm done. The idiots down in Wolf County in Kentucky, they know of things of this nature. They do? You've seen the post that was on Wait Facebook a, minute. a couple they, of They days know ago. just how corrupt Mitch McConnell is? They know this? Well, of course they do. Then, then why on earth do they vote for him? Don't you think that the uh, the woman who ran against him uh, oh, shit. brought up all this crap, Ola? No, I don't think she really did. Well, I've seen, I've heard her do it. Elizabeth Warren calls Republicans does, does, her col her colleagues. She calls them her colleagues. They handle each other with. They, listen, they because handle. Because they are elites, my friend. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're they afraid of the elite. You. Uh, uh, they are above you. That's because they say so. Correct. If you were, if you were worth a hundred mil billion dollars, you think I'm going to let you get away with saying that you're better than everybody in this in this whole town? It's not a matter of whether you would let me get away with it. The people because you were, say so. The people who were listening would put you down and the elite up. That's the issue. Because people kiss the ass of those that Whatever are rich. Whatever the reason, that is what What is the logical reason for them to do that? Psychologically. There is none. They, we, know that the, <laughs> we know that the Republicans vote against their own interests. You honestly we know think, this. You honestly think that um, that woman, uh, Mitch McConnell's opponent in Kentucky, Really expose Mitch McConnell? You honestly think the Kentuckians really know guy. what Mitch McConnell does? Really does? Getting back to what I said at the very beginning. These people, they know these things. They know their Republican candidates and etc. are caricatures. They vote for them anyway. The teabaggers see them as caricatures. You yes, actually, they do. You believe that? They do. Yeah. You watch what happens at the debates. Wait a minute. When they choose one guy, you watch how they insult the other guy and etc. 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 They're what? all Republicans. They're the re all Republicans. The Republicans. As when Reagan was alive, he had these, this agenda. Don't say nothing bad about your fellow Republicans. That doesn't hold today. Mm. Hey, I, I say plenty of things bad about my fellow people. That's the, you. Would you let me talk for Christ's sakes? I say I say bad things to people, fellow uh, uh, ambassadors of the fitness industry, because when I see things that are wrong, I feel I need to get the information out. It is the honest way to live. And guess how? How many people you put out of business? I don't give a fuck. Ah! But if, but if they're screwing, listen, if they're running a scam. Yeah, expose And they're taking it's people's people. money. But. That people don't have to spend. Yeah, but you ain't going to stop the people from going there. That's the part. I don't know. I, I mean. Your job I is know. to warn. Your job is to expose. But your job is not, and it won't be, to stop them from making moolah. Because that ain't going to happen. They have a right to continue their infomercials or their, their little certification programs and whatever they're doing. They wouldn't have a right if you required that they tell the truth. Or, they're, or they come up with a, a clever inventor, comes up with a new exercise tool. This is not the tool. It's just, you know, he comes, he invents it, he gets a patent on it, and he does an infomercial, and he people are ordering this shit, and then all of a sudden, Bad reviews come out. Mm -hmm. 
those bad reviews that you see in Amazon. That's what I mean by writing the wrong. You are telling people what yeah. is what it, what that is really about. Yeah. Same thing with politics. Let's keep it in politics, please. Right. You're, okay. You're 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 muddying the waters. I'm digressing. In politics, that is your job to expose and to burn. But that won't protect the people from voting against you and voting for the idiot anyway. Well, the Republic, when the Republicans debate each other, their job is to win the nomination. That's why they're spending campaign money. So they're going to mudsling, you know, Reagan said what he said, but uh, how else do you debate without criticizing your opponent? You don't have a real debate. Then there is no real debate. Yeah. <laughs> Ever since the women, again, the women, uh, 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 League of Voters or whatever the hell League of Women Voters. Ever yeah. since they were kicked out of uh, holding the uh, the debates, you ain't got no debates anymore. That was a very well structured debate. That was you know? a real debate. And you know what? I remember the independent candidate invited by the League of Women Voters. I remember three people up there. Well, Mr. Ron was Perot kid. was there. Yeah, when I was a kid, I, I always yeah, remember yeah. the third independent 1990s. guy. Yeah. People got to know. Hey, I was reading some some crazy things, statements by Lyndon Baines Johnson that showed that Lyndon Baines Johnson was a Dixiecrat and, and a racist. But JFK is so is so opposite of Lyndon Johnson. Why did JFK choose? He gets a South vote. He chose Lyndon it's Johnson. It's very simple. <clears throat> That's how they do these things. So he chose Lyndon Johnson as he chose his, a southerner as his VP That's because right. he wanted to get. He was a northeastern New Englander from Massachusetts. Wanted to get the South vote. Johnson wasn't from the up there. No, no, I no. Kennedy. Was, oh, Kennedy. Yeah. Okay. Kennedy picked the VP running mate. He picked Johnson. You said it's to get, to the, get the southern vote. But he was obviously like George Wallace. He was a Dixiecrat. Correct. All Democrats were at one time. He used the word, he used derogatory words for, for black people. And, uh, and he also mentioned um, that, that statement he said about if you can get the poorest white man in America to, to think that he's above Bob the black, black yeah. man, you, got you could sucker him, pick his pocket, and, and, and you know do whatever. Yes. yes, that's what it's all about. I'm better than you. What do you think the elites are about? I'm better than you. Hey, like Uncle. And I deserve the resources. Like Uncle Phil said, one of the things I agreed with him was he said prestige is all in the mind. Your perception of being better than other people. Uh, you might be an insecure little weasel of a man yeah. with a little dick. Yeah. And if you suddenly win the Powerball lottery and you win all one hundred million dollars and you go you know, you go to you go get a new wardrobe and you start strutting around and and thinking you're better than everybody else in your town, well that's your delusion. That's in your mind. Your perception. But when you get power it's even better. Even if you, even though you're a, a person, might be a decrepit little weasel of a man with a little penis. That's the true. fact that he's got multi-billion dollars. Go back to right, my friend. What he, does that cause? But it's his perception that no, makes it so. It's our perception that make it bad. Because we react to him. That's correct. In other words, he brags. He says, look at my car. I paid 150 grand for that, whatever, for a Lamborghini, whatever. Lamborghini, yeah. Hey, look at BMW. Look at my clothes. Look at, you know, you know how much I paid for my shoes? Hey, I'm worth $100 billion. And you what could be Trump, a little what, pipsqueak. What did Trump say when he announced? I'm worth $8.9 billion. Well, you gotta get that net out. Net worth. That's so he can get all the girls. I don't know about what it's for from girls. That point is, 
he, like we do in this country, we measure a man or a woman by their job. Yeah, that's why uh, American what women, they do. American woman, women rudely ask a man what he does for a living right off the bat. No, that's not from that reason. That's because they want to know if there's any security with this guy. What if there's love? What if there's security? The hell with love! Stop! Then Stop why the are they hell. dating? Then why are they getting engaged? Why are they dating as boyfriend and girlfriend if it isn't love? Why are 50% or more than 50% today divorcing? See, Dr. Bill is of an older generation than myself. My relatives, oh, everything to them is, are you making money doing it? How much you making? Are you paying your bills? Are you making money? Are you making money? Everything is money, 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 money. Now, sometimes money compensates for other things that are lacking in a man. Sometimes they do. Uh, you know, it's, it's no, love is about love. Don't mix apples and bananas. But love has nothing to do with marriage. You are conflating the two. Then why does the vows of marriage involve unconditional love? It doesn't. Where take, you, take, where does that mean? take, you, do you take this person for better or for worse, for richer or poor, yeah. sickness and in health, Where's love? yada, yada, yada. Now, okay. Where is love mentioned? Well, well why, on earth, why, why on earth would anybody be See, together wow. for uncondition, uh, 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 with all those conditions? Marriage. What is there? See, this guy's a spin doctor. He twists everything I say. Marriage, throughout history, full of shit, has always been a economical thing. Not a love thing. That was the olden days of marriage. Oh, has you mean when people changed? had to pay a dowry? Or dowry? Then why did they bring up the marriage vows? Americans didn't. Pay why did they bring up the vows? Analyze the vows. There's no love mentioned in them. I just said it. Do you take this person for better or for worse, sickness and in health, rich or poor? Economical. What does that? That has nothing to do with economics. The, those vows. What, what? You just said it. They're not economical. What if, What is in sickness and health? That means it, it represents you're with that person unconditionally. Right, whether they got they paid $800 million for it, cancer It has or nothing what? to do with it. It's economical. If the bride's family paid a dowry to the groom's family. Forget about dowry. You're talking about another country now. We're not interested in that. You know what? I, I'm America. going to discuss the vows with all, or everybody else I know and get their take on what that means. And Fine. money, who has money? No, 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 no. Who has money going into the relationship and what job you have that has nothing to do with those vows? That's not the issue. What do those vows have to do with the love? That's the issue. It's not about money. Real love is not about money. It's about economics. Bullshit. Well, there you go. All right, go ahead. Go into your readings. Economics is a gold digger. A gold digger cares about what a man does for a living or what so, he has. So, if that's, you just made my point. If that's what's okay for them. You made my point. I'm talking about people that are really in it. I'm talking they, about how because you don't have marriage love. is set up in America. It's an economical institution and has nothing to do with love. Does that mean it can't have nothing to do with love? No! And you live together. Then you don't get married then. You don't have to. That's what they did in the old days. They said, I'm married. Simple hey, as that. Then I, the church had to stick its bad God, goddamn nose in and sanctify. Hey, all these people, the marriage. all these couples where, you know, the, the wife or, might, or the man might have used the the spouse to get an easy green card or or let's say a, a blatant gold digger you're, you're, that, you're, you're, I, well, well let me finish then there's a woman who who dates a guy because he does have a lot of money and they get, hey if they want if they get married in that case it is just a piece of paper because there is no real love there because you're you're with the person because you're exploiting the person it's an exploitation you, if the if the person goes broke, if the man loses his job and 
things get repossessed on him and the mortgage gets, you know, the house gets taken away. He goes broke and then she leaves him. Well, that certainly isn't love. That's and not a... And what about the people who stay together for 70 years? Sounds like love to me. Well, then, then why are you saying that I'm excluding it? I'm not. I'm explaining that it is an economical institution. It's almost like you first and foremost. But it sounds. What was like the first argument that the gays were making about getting married? Well, they overdid the. No, no, don't, don't come in and and, and confuse yeah. the issue. Well, guess what? Fast track what is a lot, a lot more. What were the issues involved? Were they Originally? love? No, the, the or the, were they the the issues economics. that married people economics have and they didn't economics fine gay the gay Bingo. the whole reason why the gay marriage uh, agenda was uh, was uh, not say the whole there could be two people in love okay nobody's excluding that well, I mean I mean in the media everything is you know the flag you know the the rainbow flag and and the gay rights and gay marriage and I think it started based on economics where the the hetero heterosexual couple had advantages in the relationship whereas the uh, the gay couple did not and then you had the people dying from HIV yeah and they were in the hospital right and the gay partner was not able to make decisions for their partner because they weren't married you yeah. see yeah 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 okay. yeah <clears throat> So they, they they did love each other, but that well, wasn't part of the marriage it, ceremony. It, it, it sounded like when I mentioned initially about the woman right off the bat, rudely asking the man what he does for a living, uh, what do you do? Okay, the the real answer is well, should it matter? But what you said is that's how it's done in America. Well, that doesn't mean that because doesn't make it are right. Looking for security from that man. You want to be equal? See, this is another Not thing. Equal. This is another thing about the ultra liberals. The ultra liberals, the women, the feminists want equality when it comes to making money. But when it comes to socially, oh no, 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 they want their cake and eat it. The guy's got to pay for everything. The guy's got to have a good job if they date him. That's a double standard. But what does that have to do with security? It's the same as what me and Ken Thiessen, Ken Thiessen was telling me about the fucking affirmative action program. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. You got double standards. You got uh, kowtowing. You got special treatment. It's all unfair. It's, it's psychologically unfair. Gee, then it was unfair for over 239 years or whatever against the black man, wasn't it? You mean not, not nobody ever hiring him? Whatever. No, that wasn't. So he doesn't fair. deserve a little affirmative action. No, I, no, even gender quotas. You know, even this deal where now you have a thousand and one female CEOs and editors of magazines, and, and there's so many female bosses now, even though they say they're not being paid as much as a man. But a lot of them pay, are paid well. Now there's all females being hired as supervisors, executives, CEOs. You know, I think there is a, uh, um, a gender quota law also, um, if I'm not mistaken. But the point is... If they can do the job, what's the problem? If they're the best candidate that, that gets interviewed, they should be hired. If well, they're the best candidate. But what if they were, what if they were discriminated against? No, no special treatment. Before. Okay, Ken That's Thies not special treatment. Kenny Thiessen was right. No, it's special Kenny treatment. Kenny Thiessen and anybody else who says different is wrong. They were discriminated against. Women and blacks in this country. Well, Ken Thiessen said... And they deserve said, some said, sort of recompense. Well, Kenny Thiessen says it's a form of self-hate, uh, self self-racism. Uh, racism against your He's own... He's full of shit. Your own race. He's full of shit. And I'm saying it here, right now, okay. on camera. I know he's going to explode when he, re when he sees the show. Good. But, I mean... Because he's wrong. Deep down inside, he is prejudice. 
He is bigoted. Why do you have to kowtow to any anyone? You're not kowtowing. I just told you. For 239 years, uh, uh, uh. they were discriminated against. When when does the? How are you going to make up for this? When well when does it get made up for? Ah. Uh, when time when? time wise. We had 239 years of it discriminating. So another 239 Maybe. years of affirmative action. There you go. And and gender quotas. Agenda quotas is 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 not affirmative action. It's not. There's no law that says the. There's no law that says. Says you gotta hire the woman CEO. I mean. A, no. A executive, you gotta hire the woman. Oh, okay. All right. I'm just asking. Hell? I'm just. But that doesn't look. Getting back to dating, it doesn't make it right. Oh boy, now we're to, all over. To to put now. the to put economic pressure, responsibility on a man just for dating him or 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 getting involved with him. In a in a romantic way, it is not. It is very rude, and it's nobody's business what a man does. But that wasn't the issue. I know America puts a price on absolutely everything. Thank you. We are a materialistic society. Everything. This is the okay. this is capitalism. Everything. Hey, a homeless man is invisible. People walk That's over him. Right. People and look at him like he's part of the pavement. So he's got a price. Everybody has a price. You got money. You got a lot of friends. They're phony friends, but you got a lot of friends. As soon as you go broke, people stop calling you. Bye bye. They stop calling you. Bye bye. Or you're poor and you win the Powerball lottery. All of a sudden, everybody calls you. Okay. You probably have time. Whatever for that has to do with affirmative action, I don't know. No, it has to do with the original debate about about economics and relationships that where it doesn't belong about in real love, real love relationships. Right. So we get back to the big situation of changing the system. Oh, without a doubt, the system has to be changed. Well, so without stop arguing these picayune points, which only serve to continue the problem. They're not picky when people are bitching and moaning that they they want they, they want more rights, they deserve more rights, they want more favors, they deserve more favors. Meanwhile, there's another group that does the same thing, and another group does the same thing, and everybody wants, 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 wants. Well, gee, instead of doing everything, the elites and the rich and the corporations they get all the favors. Up at Nobody says a fucking word about that. I don't hear the teabaggers saying that. So you say the teabaggers know more than we think. I don't think they really know these things. Look, here's the thing. You're wasting time. You're lying to yourself and others. I'm lying if you're myself. going to... When I say you, it is a collective term. Oh, okay. Jesus Christ, man. All right, lying to yourself, people, society. Lying to yourself and others. When you bitch and moan about cutting social programs right. to save money for the freaking government, and you don't go after the goddamn big problems like tax breaks for the rich. <laughs> subsidies for corporations, etc., etc. You are a fool and a liar. Was well, it hypocrisy in the worst form, or the ultimate form? Well, then you don't really want to cut the budget, do you? No, because your agenda is the disdain and hate for the poor. Well, yeah. Well, if you're worried about one or two percent of the of the total budget, and you're not looking at all the wealth fair the billions going to corporations and, and every year in subsidies yeah. the the, mil the military budget waste uh, planes that are never going to be used etc then you it's obvious that you are simply a shill or, 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 or a bribe taker you are prejudiced what you are you're bigoted against who I'm talking when they do it against the poor. What are we talking oh, about? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're no, you're you're targeting. You're singling out. You're targeting 
the poor. You're, you're waging war on the poor. <coughs> you're, you're, you're. Uh, I think, I think blaming the poor for everything is like a big sleight of hand distraction. They don't want to see that they the real problem is they're taking the bribes and they're corrupt the American people to see them giving billions of your money to the rich. They want you to look at the poor. Look at the immigrants of color, those illegal immigrants, those po people on food stamps, those uh, uh, people on social services. They're causing a distraction. Well, yeah, and it that's takes... Only, that's only, uh, you know, the whole government is corrupt. It's but how many, of, you know, little stuff here and there. But how much it's of all the, corrupt. How much of the, the asses of the masses know these facts? Well, they're not, certainly if they know them, they're not going to really uh, bitch about it because that would be, in their mind, this unpatriotic. Is, this, this is why a progressive candidate like a Bernie Sanders needs to bring all this dirt out in the open. You got it. See, you can't be, you can't handle, see what I mean? The same thing with Nancy Pelosi. Why can't we be friends? Uh, 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 bipartisanship, getting along, compromise. This is ultra liberal, flower child, hippie, Pollyanna way of thinking, of being gentle, like Gary No. Pussy! You know? He said he, he balls me out for calling Oprah Winfrey a corporate whore. But that's what she is. She's a corporate whore. But that's not what his problem with you was. True. He, he, yeah. No, he didn't want you to do it on his page. I took it off. Fine. I put it on mine. But that's what he wanted. And then had nothing to do with you. I'm talking about. Again, you take the collective. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the ultra liberal way of thinking where you don't want to be, you don't want to roll your sleeves up and really have a war with your enemy. You want, you're afraid of being targeted as something, I don't know, mean-spirited or, you know what I mean? You, you got to be slightly militant when you're fighting evil. And you got to yeah. expose But it. there's only one problem with that. What? When evil is more powerful than you, you have to be very careful. You know how many journalists are dead because they opened their mouths? How many whistleblowers are behind bars? Because they opened their mouths. Well, Mr. You, Snowden, he's in some foreign country. He can't come home. No, he's got a, he was invited to France to live, which, which is not a bad idea. But he, no, no, and, and, the, and the mainstream media never tells you about any of this. Of course. Of course. Okay, uh, the first reading is about Christie, right? I got several readings about Christie, but I have no time now because Be because you started defending the the girls out there that asked the man what he does for a living. That's how this all started. You see, this is the problem with you. <laughs> you take something that is bigger than what you're thinking and make it a personal thing. Instead, you can't of, do that. Instead of I saying, just said, instead of saying, James, we are a materialistic right. country. The yeah, women I, I, who want to get married, going to date a guy and try to make a relationship out of it, they want to make the, sure that the guy is secure and will secure for them a, a, a happy uh, future. How, why does a happy future equate to money automatically? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're a materialistic society! You mean like when Madonna sang that song, I'm a material girl and I live in a material world? She was being very honest, wasn't she? she she's, that was like a song for a, a gold digging whore, yeah. If you want to analyze it. Stop. Stop that. I'm a man of science. I like to analyze And it things. has nothing to do with just whores or females. It's all over. All over? It's a materialistic society. Man, woman. And dog! You're trying to say men are as petty with materialistic things as women are? You just described them before with his Lamborghini. I mean, look at the big picture. 
Stop with this personal yeah, stuff. But how come 100% of the girls say, say, ask the same rude question? You made it personal again. Even if it's middle You're age. making it See, smaller See, he, he doesn't, uh, Billy doesn't like to, to target a, any group for anything. Not when it's a wider problem. Why would I stick it on, you know, one chick that uh, is, is, is this, if that, it, or the other If it thing? looks and sounds and walks and smells like a duck, it's a duck. But yeah, anyway. But it might be a whole societal ducks. I mean, all, Not the, just one duck. all the varieties and all the flocks of every Jeez. duck. Stuff that we're discussing is bigger than just some personal thing. Or some uh, small right, I'll, little I'll, group I'll, of stuff. I'll save the the dating topic for maybe with Ron, Ronald um, King or Anthony Lore or one of those other guys because they all sure agree that guys don't worry about what the girl oh, does. Oh, come on. What the girl does for a living. Men never ask a girl what because she does for a living. Because they think with their dicks. Cut it out. Hey, if you, listen, you got, you got testicles and a penis, right? You, you got them. Are they make they're making testosterone, right? They got them. You got a prostate. You got it. Well, if you got it, said. that's how the that's how the, the 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 machine is designed. You got a brain, which is supposed to control that. Oh, so you're supposed to not not look at the girl's appearance at all, like almost like physical chemistry doesn't exist, and you're supposed to. She could be as ugly as Mother Teresa was. She could be a hell of a nice woman. She could have a high IQ. She could have a great job, etc. But if go. she's ugly as hell, she's ugly as hell, man. You so, can't force. Look, that guy with so the puffy. So what are you? So what are you? Why? Why are you going to be dating her? That that doofus with the puffy face on E Harmony. He he has nothing in his questionnaire about what type you like physically. It's all about compatibility. You can't, that doesn't work if there's no physical chemistry. I don't know how the hell we got from the brain controlling the body. Because I, I mentioned that every female in, in out there in today's society, whether it be online dating or not, they all have the root habit in America of asking the man what he does. And you, instead of saying, you know, James, you're right, that is rude. Oh, no, you just went off and defended them. Oh, I gotta stretch. I gotta, I gotta stretch my back. I don't know where the defense. It's is the way you answered it. The way you answered them. it. I explained them. I did not defend anybody. I'm not out here defending. And it, what the hell? It's a rude question. That, well, then fine, but it's a small thing. It's between you and her. But how come everyone? That's nothing to do with society. How come everyone, I deal with society. I know. How come? I every, deal with the world. That how, how come everyone asks the same thing? If they want equality, no, it's connected to equality and feminism. If they want equality and they want feminism and, and, and they want to be equal... Then they won't get married. And they won't be worried about it. So? That's what I'm connecting it to. I'm not just talking about guys that want to find a girlfriend. I'm talking about the connection, the double standards of ultra-liberalism. What does this have to do with the brain controlling the dick? Because that's the way, hormonally, that's the way the man is the made. The brain controls the dick. No, not it's a, the other way around. It's an ongoing battle. No, it isn't. You have the brain, I mean, the dick has no brain. The brain is the brain. Why do you think all those Hustler magazines and, 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 uh, and, uh, um, um, why do you think porn sells because of the way I think most of them are, most of it's for men most yeah but of most of it is for masturbation right well, what yeah. is that the brain went out to the uh, newspaper stand and bought the hustler magazine when it when it when it when it got all now the, the brain determines the time when it's gonna pull its dick when all the guys I know are not attached and they're searching for a girlfriend they don't think about the first thing that comes into mind is am I physically attracted to this woman then they take it from there they don't think about gee I wonder what her hobbies and interests are I wonder uh, uh, about compatibility what uh, uh, or that 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 
that doofus on eHarmony, the, 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 what is it, the uh, 90 points of the, whatever. 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 The point is, they first comes physical chemistry, then comes analyzing possible compatibility. physical chemistry came later. No, that, that's how a bitch, no, that's how, that's how your woman, the women think, because they don't have the testosterone a man has. They think compatibility first, physical down the road. But but the, but, but, the, but the monetary just, question you're is root about hormones, right? The monetary. I said the chemistry comes sometimes later. Once you do get to know the person, if you want and that. know that they are in line with what you want. Well, that doesn't say a hell of a lot about the individual if the woman doesn't see fire fireworks at the beginning. It doesn't say a lot for him. I just said it may come down the road. It's not something that I would want. Jeez. I'm a Leo. I like people to tell me great things from day one. That's how we are designed. Yeah. We like. What if those great like things to hear great are lies? Things. Oh, that's not very nice. Why not? That's telling the truth. You are out here a We're master of the truth. Lies. Yeah. No, like somebody who makes a play for you from day one, that means that you're scratching her right where she itches. That means that you are her type. Somebody fine, you, bingo. You, but then that's proceed more, with the, 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 the the relationship. But that's more complimentary than uh, being her friend. No, being her friend first and her falling in love with you months you later. You were talking about scratching the ego. That's what you're talking about. What's more complimentary? Having somebody pat you on the back saying, he's a good guy. Or a woman saying, oh, I like to park, park my, uh, uh, I, like to, I like to jump in a sack with that guy. What's more complimentary? Of course, when the woman wants to jump in a sack with you, it's more complimentary. Maybe. <laughs> what yeah. if it's only for one time? You mean a one night stand? Yeah. What what kind of relationship is that? Well, it's a, it's a non relationship. Well, then bingo. I rest my case, Your yeah. Honor. You know, you know. But anyway, anyway, uh, the um, let's go, let's go. Take the break. Oh, yes. the Christy, or the break? No, Christy. It's it's way past the break then. All right. Um, this is what happens when they try to fuck old James, you know, people out there, fuck old James in the ass with no fucking KY jelly. All this time blows by and gets yeah. wasted. Anyway, it's time for lunch. We'll see you for the second half of this uh, holiday weekend show, 4th of July 2015. Uh, lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer. Uh, we're going to be joined by the Bible verses of how to defeat a conservative, hit the pause button and read and learn, followed by our commercial voiceover artist, William Hamilton Morrow III with his words of wisdom and promo. This is William H. Morrow. 
The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay, we're back. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. Your promo and words of wisdom, William, Tim, William Hamilton Morrow III. And now, now, finally, after our long-winded, fast and furious debate, argument, whatever you want to call it, um, bantering, we will sink our teeth into these readings. <clears throat> Why not call for Governor Christie's resignation and let him pay his own way around the country to visit the Dallas Cowboys and to run for president? He has turned his back on New Jersey and taken his state into a drastic state of decline. He has certainly caused more problems than he has solved. He continues to burden taxpayers with the costs of his jaunts and associated security, not to mention all the legal costs of his perpetual lawsuits. This governor is completely out of touch or is completely indifferent to the sentiments of the people of this state. The people of New Jersey want solutions to its ongoing problems, not more of them. Christie refuses to work with the State Senate and Assembly to solve the issues facing our state. I cite the pension debacle, which is being ignored and the state's low credit rating, which thanks to him is not where it should be. Ignoring problems does not solve them. It makes them worse. Why continue with the status quo? Why continue to watch our state decline? If Christie won't resign, start the process to remove him so New Jersey can recover from his damage and start to solve the festering issues that have put state finances in jeopardy and made the state the political laughingstock it currently is. I think it's more or less him not caring instead of he, him not being in touch. But he simply doesn't care and he's, he's very obnoxious and out front and arrogant about what he does, like like most Republicans today, they're, they're, they're not shy about letting you know how they feel and what their agenda is, but Christie is the most obnoxious because of his personality. Um, but he's a straight talker. He said he'll tell you the truth, even if you don't like it. He's a truth well, teller. Does he, does he tell the truth about who pays him off? What bribes he might no, have been taking under no, the table? No, 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 he wouldn't do that. How silly of you. <laughs> What's the matter with you? You know, uh, uh, people should know him by now. As far as people having the balls to remove him, it's not going to happen. I mean, <laughs> like, like I said before, if you watch the uh, News 12 New Jersey local channel, they always talk about Chris Christie with big smiles on their face. They never say anything derogatory or critical of 
Corpus Christi anywhere on the mainstream media. Even, well, you might hear it you know, on the New York stations locally, but rarely, rarely do you hear the media criticize uh, any Republican. All right, continue. Surprise! Governor Christie is running for president. Yeah. I thought he was running for national stand-up comedian. Yeah, well, the same thing could be said for Donald Trump. Because he's been regaling New Hampshire audiences with jokes and total distortions of his dismal record in the state of New Jersey. Sadly, his record here is not the least bit funny as reflected by his recent 30% approval rating. When measuring economic recovery, we are 46th in the country. Of course, his big announcement is no surprise. New Jersey taxpayers have been funding his unofficial campaign for years by paying his full salary and other expenses as he travels all over the stinking country. So Chris Christie has become the world's greatest and fattest moocher off the taxpayer's dole. He's a welfare cheat, isn't he? Welfare. Yeah. Welfare cheat. Yeah, anybody who who uh, spends taxpayers' money on, on personal agendas, not counting a, uh, your salary, I would say so. Christie has always been a presence on the political scene, highly skilled at entertainment, and even sentimentality over substance. With the possible exception of Donald Trump, I cannot recall any politician with a more inflated opinion of himself. Christie's featured campaign slogan is, Telling it like it is! <laughs> it would be more accurate if it were, Telling it like it is. Well, when he, when he says New Jersey is in great shape because of him, he's not telling it like it is. We just said we're 46th in the nation. We got a pension problem. We got a tax problem. Because he lowered taxes on his friends. Unemployment problem. Friends. Yes, we do have an unemployment. <gasps> oh, there were a couple of jobs added last month. Okay. Preposterously, he is claiming to be the truth teller. So he's a um, he is a um, a wind an obnoxious buffoon rather than a a fun clown. You know, like like you have pleasant clowns. And then you have a clown from hell, like in that horror movie. Really? Well, Christie more resembles the clown from hell. In truth, the facts and figures he spouts on the campaign trail concerning his positions and actions in our state do not jibe with reality. How I wish we could get the people in New Hampshire to visit us for a detailed earful about all that has transpired in New Jersey since Christie took office. In lieu of that, I may offer them this warning. Buyer, beware. Yeah, in capital letters. In neon lights. Editorial page editor Alfred P. Doblin questioned there being a plan B. Should Governor Christie not win? the domination. We can leave Christie's plan B to Christie. Clearly he was done with New Jersey on the evening of the 2013 election. 
when it became apparent that he would have another term as its governor. Yeah, that was a shock. It is long past time that New Jersey be done with the absentee governor. For the next two and a half years, New Jersey will be in limbo, with the potential of even more damage being done to the state economically, fiscally, environmentally, socially, as it has been for the benefit of Christie's personal ambitions. Plan A as of July 1 for the residents of New Jersey should be to make their voices heard and register their dissat dissatisfaction through letters to the editor on social media websites and particularly in letters, emails, and phone calls to their state representatives calling for Christie's recall. Yeah, he puts everything on his tab, including or, law, the law fees for... If appropriate, his <laughs> impeachment. Yeah, for Bridgegate, all, the, all of his lawyer fees were put on the taxpayer's tab. Our state representatives, Republicans and Democrats alike, have to understand that we will no longer tolerate the actions or their support of Christie. I continue to distrust and question everything related to Governor Christie. His administration and his campaign for president. I question every decision that has been promulgated from budget proposals to his pension for pension diversions to the Exxon Mobil deal. That is correct. That's where that money uh, 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 saved from was supposed to go to or whatever from the Exxon Mobil thing and he took it down to 250 million or whatever yeah uh -huh. yeah so that money went bye-bye for the pension a lot of money went bye-bye with him to his sprint for the White House and a myriad of other politically motivated campaign statements the persona of the governor of New Jersey has become a Chris Christie sideshow of bombastic rhetoric and calculated subterfuge that continues to abuse the public's right to know and subverts our access to the truth at every turn in the road. As Christie campaigns for the White House, he must be held accountable for his actions and his absences that have left the state of New Jersey a rudderless ship heading for fiscal and social disaster. We are confronted daily with major economic and policy problems. It is clear Christie has conveniently forgotten his oath of office and pledge to the people of New Jersey to be a dedicated and trustworthy public servant. Yeah. He has dramatically abandoned the public trust and betrayed his own sworn commitment as governor to the people and to the state of New Jersey for a higher office. Bombastic rhetoric, huh? That's great. Adam Nimoy okay. has found a way to spend countless hours with his late father, Leonard Nimoy. Hmm. He's creating a documentary for the actor who played Spock on Star Trek. Nimoy said the Spockumentary, funded through a Kickstarter campaign that raised more than $600,000,
we'll focus on the pop icon and his legacy. The TV director and film professor said it would explore his father's life on screen and off screen. For the Love of Spock began as a project for the father and son duo before Leonard Nimoy's death in February at age 83. Nimoy said his father wanted to keep it Spock-centric, but once he passed he knew he had to include more about his father. I think it's going to be a nice kind of way just to work through all these feelings I am having and to move on with my own life. Nimoy said. Nimoy turned to crowdfunding because he was not getting the financial support he expected from the studios. The documentary will include clips from the Star Trek films and TV shows, Nimoy's other works and interviews from fans and family, as well as William Shatner who played Captain James T. Kirk and J.J. Adam Abrams, excuse me, who directed the 2009 film reboot, and celebrity fans like Seth MacFarlane, Zachary Quinto, who plays Spock in the new movie franchise, will narrate the film. Oh. I think it's great. Honestly, I think it's wonderful. Dad passed the torch to Zachary. He is the anointed one to carry on the tradition of Mr. Spock and all that that entails, Nimoy said. He's now such a part of the tradition that it just seems like he would be a major force to really come up with a dynamic product. This will be Nimoy's second project with his dad. He previously produced Leonard Nimoy's Boston, a documentary about his father's childhood in Boston. His sister, Julie Nimoy, announced in April she was partnering with her fiance to create a film on COPD, the disease that killed her father. Nimoy said when he was growing up, his father took on traits of his character and was distant and he worked a lot. He often said early in his life, he majored in career and minored in family. He said his father's alcoholism... Really? and his own substance abuse strained their relationship. Wow. We had to work on our own issues before we were able to rebound together and have the loving relationship we had the last five years of our lives. With this film he hopes he can tie in everything he loves about his father, their lives together and the character he played. It's my gift to my dad. It's my gift to Mr. Spock, who I love and adore. It's my gift to the fans who have supported us all these years. It's a gift, really, to myself to say something definitive about an incredibly interesting character who has inspired millions of people. For the Love of Spock is expected to be released in time for the 50th anniversary of the Star Trek series in 2016. Wow, 50 years. I think they should definitely ask uh, George Takai and William Shatner to take part in this documentary. I think he should uh, he should definitely have oh, them in it. Oh man, I forget who it is. Mr. Takai. 
George? is having a He's doing something. Rebuttal against some religious nut and his gay band banging. George Sakai oh. I forget who the damn guy is. You know, one of them real well known religious nuts or uh, GOP uh, contenders. I could have been a contender. George Takai, he don't back down from anybody. George Takai is, he's out there. He's out there fighting and um, and defending, uh, you know, gay rights and uh, well, any 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 uh, progressive uh, cause. George Takai is outspoken. Wow. And uh, he's also uh, quite the uh, the athlete, from what I understand. He works out intensely. He's in fantastic shape for his age, which is, you know, something I wish William Shatner would do. <laughs> now he'd rather do a Priceline commercial. Priceline with his daughter, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's a little, he's a little chubsy. He seems like a nice guy. He's a little chubsy ebsy William Shatner. Uh, he already uh, throws the guy off the, off the... Yeah. He seemed like a nice guy. He seemed like a nice guy. <laughs> well, yeah, the kid, the boyfriend came off a yeah. little cocky with him and he tossed him over. <laughs> For he, nearly a century! Insulin has been a life-saving diabetes treatment. Now, scientists are testing a tantalizing question. What if pills containing the same medicine patients inject every day could also prevent the disease? Thirteen-year-old Hayden Murphy of Plainfield, Illinois, is helping researchers determine if the strategy works for type 1 diabetes, the kind that is usually diagnosed in childhood. If it does, he might be able to avoid the lifetime burdens facing his five-year-old brother, Weston. They include finger pricks, blood sugar checks, Avoiding playing too hard or eating too little, which both can cause dangerous blood sugar fluctuations. Aiden Murphy is among more than 400 children and adults participating in U.S. government-funded international research investigating whether experimental insulin capsules can prevent or delay Type 1 diabetes. Hospitals in the United States and eight other countries are involved. Recruitment is ongoing. To enroll, participants must first get bad news. Results of a blood test showing their chances for developing the disease are high. When I got the news, I was devastated, Hayden said. He knows it means his life could change in an instant. He has the daily reminders he sees what his brother goes through. So now Hayden Murphy swallows a small white capsule daily and has his blood checked periodically for signs diabetes. I hope it doesn't come to me, and I really don't want it to come to him, said Hayden. A small preliminary study by different researchers published recently in the Journal of the American Medical Association suggests the approach might work. Children who took insulin pills showed immune system changes that the researchers said might help prevent diabetes. The ongoing larger study <coughs> excuse me, is more rigorous, randomly assigning participants 
You'll get experimental insulin capsules or dummy pills and should provide a clearer answer. Does it prevent indefinitely? Does it slow it down? Does it delay diabetes? That also would be a pretty big win. About 1.25 million Americans have type 1 diabetes. Type 2 disease is more common, affecting nearly 30 million nationwide. And most of the more than 300 million worldwide with diabetes Besides short-term complications from poorly controlled blood sugar, both types raise long-term risks for damage to the kidneys, the heart, and the eyes. Both types are increasing. And for type 2, experts think that's because of rising obesity and inactivity. Yeah, what about... Uh Sugar. Putting pressure on the American food industry for, uh, yeah, uh, 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 maybe a deliberate um, uh, addiction that's being caused, a deliberate sneaky plan by uh, the food industry to get Americans addicted to sugar and thus become insulin resistant. But the upward trend in type 1, type 1, a diabetes, is increasing worldwide by at least 3% each year. We know so very little about the exact mechanisms that cause type 1, which complicates efforts to prevent it. For the most part, it's really shooting an arrow into a field and hoping one of the arrows hits a target. In type 1, the pancreas stops making insulin, a blood sugar regulating hormone that helps the body convert sugar into food and into energy. Treatment is lifetime replacement insulin, usually via injections or a small pump. In type 2, the body can't make proper use of insulin. It can sometimes be treated with a healthy diet and exercise. Genes are thought to increase risks for type 1 diabetes. Viruses and other infections are among the factors suggested as possible triggers for the disease. Which come to attack insulin producing cells. Dr. Wendy Brickman, diabetes specialist at Chicago's Lurie Children's Hospital, who is involved in the study, explained, researchers think taking insulin by mouth so that it is digested like food might somehow trick the faulty immune system into not attacking insulin-making cells. Insulin pills are being studied as a diabetes treatment, but the challenge has been finding a way to get the drug to reach the bloodstream without being degraded as it is digested. That's why they have to take injections. Yeah. Because pills never work. A branch of the National Institutes of Health is funding the prevention research, including two other studies. One involves infusions of the drug, Orencia, oh boy. <sighs> approved for rheumatoid arthritis. Another autoimmune disease. The other involves infusions of an experimental drug called Teplizumab. Teplizumab. If prevention pills work, they would likely be expensive. 
than having a lifetime, less expensive, excuse me, than having a lifetime of diabetes. Let well, me just add something here, please. Sure. That once they do, if it works, if it works, guess what? The government, us taxpayers who paid for the studies, will give it to some private company to make all the money on it. So they, they, they are. So the, the, um, the government. Of the United States, very often, will um, misuse taxpayers' money for uh, things that do not uh, directly benefit the general public, but to aid in some corporation to make a profit. So it would be misuse oh, would be otherwise. A, it's socialism. Mis misuse misuse would be another way of saying stealing tax dollars. Wasting it, wasting tax dollars, stealing yeah. it, like 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 the stealing of uh, Social Security and Medicare uh, money that does not belong to them in the first place to steal uh, 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 money uh, programs that do not affect the de the deficit or being part of the deficit or anything like that. Social Security, Medicare, uh, but, but you know, but um, they uh, they could continue to demonize socialism all they want. The fact of the matter is, it is capitalism that is the true evil. Yeah. So if you call the other guy evil, what have you done? Look at over there. Yeah, well, what they do is they, uh, when they scream about socialism or commie pinko or blah, 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 what they do is they, they wave the American flag at the same time they're spouting their lies and all these stupid idiot rednecks, they, they believe it, they suck it up. All this, uh, anytime you mention the Bible and, and God and patriotism or blah, they get all excited. Meanwhile, they're too lazy and stupid to read their own Bible, so they listen to some counterfeit Christian phony pastor that fills their heads up with yeah. nonsense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, guess what? What? <clears throat> when someone gives them the actual facts, what do they do then? They... What they, do they call him? I don't know. What do they call them? Well, they call them wrong, don't they? Yeah, like like what Ken Create says when I tell him about, you know, what you say about the Bible interpretation. And he says, you're wrong, and you says he's And what is he supposed to do? I says, prove it. I told him, prove it. And he says, oh, yeah, I give you verses. Usually, sure. my scripture quotes, etc., are followed by many, many scriptures. Now, if he was a decent person who was truly looking for the truth, what would he do? He'd go research it. That's correct. He would take those scriptures and he yeah. would look at them. Well, like like I've said... I'm not pulling them out of the air. Yeah, like, no, no. Like, like I've said and others have said on, on the uh, Facebook group that Republicans have a tendency to cherry-pick short verses, one-liners, uh, from the Bible that suit their selfish, greedy agenda. And like, if they want to be mean and nasty and, 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 and etc., guess what? They take this cherry-picking from the Old Testament instead of the new one. <laughs> yeah, because... Where, the, where Jesus said in the new one, love your enemies, well, do no. good unto those who hate you. No, no, I'm talking about treatment of the poor. That's mostly... Yeah, and homosexuals. That's mostly... They get uh, it from the Old Testament. New, New Testament really covers most of the, the attitude towards um, people, fellow man, the poor. And, you know, I mean, but they like the Old Testament because they like to uh, stone people that don't agree with them. Yeah. Put people to death that are not like them. Yeah. And, uh things of that nature. 
or, or, or the, uh, the bitch Joni Ernst when she says if you don't work you don't eat well she didn't look at the whole story surrounding that and what you had brought up was it has nothing to do with food no it has to do with God's work in the church right because you got to read further on and he's talking about the gossipers and the busybodies instead of doing God's work it has nothing to do with employment Oh, you have, you know, within within the church, within the body of the church, you have people that are uh, uh, constantly you have, you have a job to do. constantly being judgmental and uh, and saying, "Well, I'm 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 a better Christian than that mm -hmm. one. That one there is no good. That one. Oh, guess what her daughter did? Oh, guess what happened in her family? Uh -huh. You have all this uh, pettiness instead of doing God's work." Same thing with the parable of the talents. It's not a money thing. It's a work of God thing. But Republicans always make it a money thing. Yeah, don't Everything get. they take don't from get. the Bible is directly or indirectly is associated with money. Spending money. And they do not want to spend any money even if it's to help the lazy moochers? Even if it's money that's not really theirs. To help the poor that they consider lazy moochers, but it's okay for them to, to steal that same taxpayer's money to give it for free to the rich. Yeah. But that's fine because the why? They deserve all of our resources. Well, they deserve it because... They're better than us. Because of... No, the real reason is that... Uh, they take, they're taking bribes from the, the rich, the 1%. They're being paid off to say these things. They believe it. They See, believe you, you, it. you, you, you believe respect too much that they of... they are better than you. You respect too much of a person's perception. I don't give a shit what their perception is. I only care what what is. What is. You see this shillelagh made of black thorn? It's what is. Next time it's you tangible. See, next time you see a gentleman or lady yeah. out in the world right. driving a Lamborghini. Well that's that's a realistic. Walk up to them and ask them <coughs> nicely, do you think you're better than me? And I'll tell you what they're going to say. Okay? Well, they're, they're not. They're, they're either not going to take kindly to the question, or they might say, "Yeah, I'm better than you," and I and, I, and then I'll say, "Because you have a lot more money than I I do." Is that why you think that? And they might say, "Yes," and I am entitled because of that to your resources. My resources. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's when it gets nasty. Whoa. When when they say they're entitled to Mr. my Brayback resources, doesn't think he's being nasty at all. Well, he must have. Uh, he you know these people must have really great bodyguards, security because Brayback. I, I can picture somebody, you know, taking a guy like that out. I mean, really. Usually, that does not happen to the bad guys. Yeah, isn't that something? Yeah. It's always the innocent to pay the price. But you know, I was proud to see somebody uh, try to take down the Confederate flag the hard way from in South uh, in South Carolina State House. I heard somebody. That wasn't the hard way. It was the uh, uh, what you call it took it down. I mean, hardcore way. The governor took it down. Oh, I thought somebody shot it with a rifle. No. Oh, then I I he was took misinformed. It down. Haley. Oh, I thought somebody took oh, a shot at the, the flagpole. No way, Jose. Oh, yeah, heaven forbid a progressive should grow a pair of balls and do something militant. She's a Republican. She probably got a lot of heat for it. That's probably why. Whatever, but uh, she took it down. Voluntarily. I don't know. I just like the other way of taking care of your enemy. You know, like smiting them. You mean you don't love your enemy? No. Do good unto those who hate you? No, I hate their guts. My enemy? Ah, oh, I can't stand them. Oh, man.
I can't stand. I, 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 I don't feel. I cannot feel love for Mitch McConnell, <laughs> or, or or Ted Cruz, or you ever see the facial expressions he makes? Like he's like he's yeah, taking he's a, a shit. He's an idiot. He's a, <laughs> his hands are up in the air like he's talking to God, you know. And he's, he's a Play-Doh faced guy. He's got Play-Doh like yeah. a yeah like a muppet, a muppet face like yeah. Paul Ryan. You know, he looks like he's communicating with the Lord or something. Oh yeah, the Lord wouldn't speak to him if he was the last man on earth. You know what's funny? I don't know if you've noticed it. The new actor playing Colonel Sanders in the Kentucky yeah. Fried Chicken commercial, he laughs like, like, like G. W. Bush. He goes, hey, 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 hey. That was a sinister laugh. That was the laugh of an elitist saying, "I'm putting one over on you." You notice all the uh, <laughs> the old political satire cartoons always post. The CEO or the or the uh, the corporatist as a very obese, Chris Christie looking. With a cigar in his mouth. With a, with a, with a, with a big cigar. Yeah. Sometimes a monocle like the Monopoly man, a top hat, and um, a tuxedo with tails. Push, push, push. Yeah. Push, and, push, and, push, and, and, and uh, yeah, like uh, I guess the Penguin from Burgess Meredith used to dress like that, except he was in. He wasn't in black. He was oh, the in guy, the, 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 the Willoughby. Next stop, Next Willoughby, stop Willoughby. 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 Push, 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 Robert. Oh, his, his boss. Push, push, push. Yeah. Push, push, push. Faster, faster. Productivity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So and yeah, the child labor. You know, the, you know, we're talking industrial revolution. And now we will have to uh, have some coffee. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe not to the people involved, but it's lighter than, you know, what than, we did. Than world politics or national politics. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go ahead. I have a serious problem okay. with my future wife. Oh. I recently overheard her talking to her friend about being unfaithful to me. Oh. That's not a good way to start. When I confronted her, all she said was that she couldn't talk right now. Oh, which means she's not denying it. I feel like I have to record everything in my own house just to learn the truth. To make things even more stressful, she recently told a couple of people that I hit her. But it's not true. I hope she didn't, he didn't give her a, a diamond ring that he's paying off for. I did not hit her. I'm not sure why she has been acting like this lately. She's nuts. Impossible. She did just find out that her mother had breast cancer, and that might be playing a role in her behavior. We still always find time to make love. But you, when you, when you're going through a crisis in life, you want your loved ones to be close with you. You you want that emotional reinforcement. You don't want to drive loved ones away. So I don't know why she would seek it with someone else. No. She is my everything. What should I do? Apparently, it's one-sided. The first thing you should not do is get married. Get that ring back. I hope he didn't give her a ring. Your fiance's behavior and your response are the very essence of dysfunction. No. If you are correct and she is stepping out on you, this is a huge problem. Your declaration that you feel like you have to record everything just to learn the truth is chilling. It's a huge red flag. Her counter accusation that you hit her is potentially very dangerous for you. Because of an escalation in behavior I sense in both of you. And the seemingly toxic connection between you two. It would be wisest for you to separate. Seek the support of family. 
close friends and a professional counselor to help you deal with this loss and change. Not much you can do, I mean, it is what it is, it's, oh, eh. I don't know what to say, it's traumatic. Well, I think she said it all. It's traumatic. Don't get married. Yeah, yeah you just have to, you just going to have to let time and meeting a new person uh, help him forget. Or just bang her on the side, she seems to be banging. She has no problem with banging him. And then keep her as a as a fuck friend. Fuck bunny. Fuck bunny. Fuck bunny. Yeah. Fuck bunny. Yeah. How come they 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 always tend to associate sexual uh, um, activities with rabbits? Because they are prolific. The, the Playboy bunny. The or the. Um, you know, the beach bunny or whatever, beach uh, uh, snow bunny. Beach, bu baby, beach, baby, baby. Da, 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 da. Yeah, the beach boy. No, that was somebody else. No, I think that was the beach boys. Who the hell knows? Anyway. Anyway. What do we got here? Let me look at the old shadow on the it's sundial. Time. Oh, it's time. Thank you for joining us for this uh, 4th of July. Exhilarating couple hours. Yeah, 4th of July weekend 2015. Yeah, we had our own fireworks going. We had our own fireworks. Yeah. Um, you know, it, uh, it's a debate that could go on forever. So, it doesn't really pay to debate it if it's something that where both sides have a valid point. Um, and both sides did have a valid point. I will admit that. So something like that will go on forever. You know. Uh, uh, um, it's like the, uh, what was that, the old Reese's peanut butter cup commercial? Oh, he's got chocolate on my peanut butter. No, he's got peanut butter on my chocolate. No, Twix. Now, this is an Two old. Factories this making, is an old. Making the same product. This is when Reese's peanut butter yeah, cup I know, I was know was really had peanut butter in it. Yeah. Before but talking about the the one today is Twix. The two factories making the same product. Yeah, I I, I don't like any candy that's crunchy. I'm not a candy. No eater. wafers. No, no, I don't. I don't wafers. like uh, the crunchy. Is probably like Rice Krispies. Uh, you know bars. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. I don't like anything like that. I like dark chocolate and nuts. Uh, uh, Snickers is a good bar. It's caramel, burnt sugar, with peanuts. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, and then there's um, what's the other one? Um, Milky Way. No, nah, I don't care for that. Um, well, it doesn't have no caramel in it. Uh, of course, I'm a coconut lover. So. Mounds. Mounds would be dark chocolate with coconut. Mm -hmm. Almond Joy will be milk chocolate covered with, with, with a little almond on top. But I'm, I am not a sugar consumer. So, um, you know, if I am to make something at home, like let's say I'm making hot cocoa, I'll use stevia. Uh, then I, now I read an article that butter or ghee is a very good replacement for sugar with hot cocoa. Like you would put the teaspoon. What? You would put the pat of butter in the mug. You know, it's you know what it reminds me of. If you watch the Food Channel, you see these new young chefs coming out with these crazy concoctions. You know, everybody's got to be like a, a a unique artisan. They have to come out with something new, even though it's wacky as all hell. Mm -hmm. They got to create something new that nobody else thought of. And it's ridiculous. Some things... How the hell butter can take the place of sugar? I don't know. Well, butter um, uh, or, or heavy cream or half and half cream will um, yeah, add... Yeah, because uh, there's uh, lactose in, well, the, in the cream. No, no, it's not. It's not that bad in cream. 
even Atkins said, you know, glycemically. Yes, yes, yes. No, it's not bad because of the fat. But I'm saying fat is flavor. But it's a different flavor. Not in cocoa. <laughs> it's different. It's, you know, I mean, if you're addicted to sugar, then I would understand. I'm not. I was never a sugar person. If I eat, you know, like I was telling him off the air, my sister, yesterday, 4th of July, my mother's birthday, she brought a, a custom-made sugar-free apple pie. Real oh. high, big, and heavy. Yeah. Well, you know something? I tasted the apples. They were crispy. I tasted the cinnamon. It was, uh, it was very mild. It was not sweet, per se, but it was good. I warmed it up. I put some of uh, that uh, sugar-free Breyers um, vanilla ice cream on it because you can only only use vanilla with pie a la mode for some right. reason. Only vanilla taste it would would work, and it was great. It was it was a low glycemic dessert. I enjoyed it, and you just don't need all that sugar. Americans are definitely now. This is connecting with the other article. De De, the insulin article. Definitely Americans are addicted to sugar because they are brainwashed or forced, not forced, but brainwashed into, well actually if you go to a supermarket only, you don't have many options. There's not a lot of options. See now supermarkets are starting to carry organic health foods. They have this, this little section in the aisle where they have organic health foods. Now, but before, you didn't have that. And everything is heavily sugared. Uh, 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 anything on the shelf, a lot of it had trans fats, hydrogenated oils, carcinogenic, bad for you. I mean, for God's sakes, the commercial, remember the commercial for Nutella or Nutella? The hazelnut spread? And it shows the, the mother giving her children Nutella. Oh, it, it, it's wholesome. It's, it's made from hazelnuts. You bastard. It's loaded with sugar. And it's loaded with hydrogenated oil. And you're giving your kids this poison. That's an example of brainwashing by commercials. That's what I'm getting at. Gotta change your diet. Just like you have to change the system we live in, you got to change your food. Your the system of delivery of food also has to be you changed. Gotta, you got to change your eating habits. The whole way of life has to change. The whole system of our lives of being controlled. Like and lemon. stop the subsidy money going to the big companies instead of the little farmer. The They're little farmer man. Food, supply, should and must revert back to its original form, which is local organic farming. Don't local, touch our food. Local organic farming, not big, big agri, not factory farms, not genetically modified poisons, but local organic farming is your best way to supply Speaking food. Of Speaking of factory farms. And teach kids how to garden in, in grammar Speaking school. Speaking of factory yeah. farms, that is one of the most immoral things about our country and way of life. The livestock are abused and loaded with hormones. The immorality of how we dispatch them, etc., etc. Let them live out their last days. It's terrible. Taking, terrible. Taking baby male chicks crushing them they might be foghorn leghorn they might be white leghorns taking baby males and grinding them alive into a a poultry byproduct i mean is this the way humanity is supposed to behave that's why i said it's one of the immoralities of this time no remorse being shown by these companies no remorse like like sociopaths and they have laws against you going in there and maybe taking a video and trying to show other people what's wrong yeah and this is not counting the abuse of pets okay. of dogs and cats and so hey you know what may speaking of animals i read the top of uh, the top 10 smartest animals in the world 
and dogs and cats did not even they make the list. The list. Ah! They did not make the list. It was the rat, ah! the elephant, the orangutan, the chimpanzee, the dolphin, about the pig, uh, the pig. I think that's about it. Wait, it's only wait, seven. Oh, I think. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um. I said elephant. Anyway, yeah. the most popular yeah. pets, dogs, cats. You dirty rats, you. Rabbits. Rats actually are very, are extremely smart and extremely clean animals. Uh -huh. Believe it or not. And uh, there are cultures that worship them in China, India, you know, and uh, uh, um, I know elephants are very smart. Hey, I thought parrots were real smart. They didn't make the list. Parrots didn't even make the list. Holy mackerel. Yeah, so anyway, no, mackerels didn't make the list. Yeah, I'm glad of that. Holy mackerel. Jeez. Anyway, we'll see you next week. Oh boy. I need some of that some of that uh yellow tail wine when I get home. That's for damn sure. Alright. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.